whether you're praying beforehand or not, know this, prayer works. God answers, he hears, and he's ready. But ladies and gentlemen, the reason why Daniel could go into this den and the reason why this king could say to him confidently, I know your God is able to deliver you is because of Daniel's life up to this point. He was a man of prayer, prayed three times a day, did it every day, didn't care who knew, didn't care what they thought, didn't care what stupid law had been passed. He's going to pray. So after that, I still love this king. Don't you? Verse 18, the king went to his palace. To his palace. Went into his palace. Have you ever seen pictures of the Persian palace? They've uncovered the marble stonework in that palace and the great columns that were there. It was gorgeous. It was a place of great pomp. It was a place of great beauty. And he went into his palace, and he didn't care about the black and white stonework and the checkerboard patterns on the floor. He didn't care about those lovely green marble columns that were lining the entranceway to his bedroom. He didn't care about none of that. All he could think about was Daniel in a den with a bunch of hairy, stinky lions. That's all he could think about. And notice what it says in 18. He passed the night fasting. This was the guy who had the best food. This was the guy who had the best entertainment because it says neither were instruments of music brought before him. He probably had his Cheerios every night before he went to bed. He probably had his favorite bluegrass group come in there and play music for him every night before he went to bed. But not this night because he couldn't think about that. He couldn't think about his palace or his music or his food. All he could think about was this godly man who'd been set in a trap that he had helped create. He was probably tore up on the inside about that. And it says there, sleep went from him. He passed the entire night fasting, wide awake, worried about Daniel. And I'm sure that there were some prayers made that night. Maybe prayers that he didn't even know how to make. He just cried out of the abundance of his heart, his grief for his friend, and said, Oh God, save Daniel! Oh God, I need him in my ministry. I need him in the work of this kingdom. Oh God, please deliver him. And so all that night, he's grieving over his friend. And then it comes in the morning, he rose, probably with the first crack of light. Maybe that was the first moment he could go down to that stupid den. And he went down there, and there the guards are, and there's the seal. Nothing's changed at all. And they opened up that den of lions. And the king came with haste. And I'm sure when he walked up there, he didn't joke around with the guys standing guard. He said, unloose the seal. Open that door right now. Get him out of there. And the guards were like, yes, sir, yes, sir. And they opened up that den of lions, and he calls down in a lamentable voice, look there at 20, and he says to him, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee? That's exactly what he said to Daniel before he went into the den, and now he wants to know, is it possible? Is it possible that this is more than just religion? Is it possible that this is power? Is it possible that this is life-changing? Is it possible that this is truly the God of the universe that made all things? Is it even possible? You see, you become the impossible in the lives of the people that you're around. That's why it's so important that we walk circumspectly, that we judge ourselves lest we should be judged. That's why it's so important that we walk in the way of the word. That's why it's so important that we speak Healthy words, edifying words. That's why it's so important. Because there are people that watch us. And this king came and he said, Oh, Daniel, oh, my friend Daniel, is it possible? And Daniel, the impossible man, cries back up to the king in verse 21. And he says, My God has sent his angel. Let it ever be that he sends his angel to deliver us. He sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. Yes, sir. Because you know what? That lion's mouth, who made it? Who made the den? Who made the rock? Who made the people standing outside? God did. He's not weak. His hand is not too short that he cannot save. Daniel said, uh, yeah. He said, 
O king, live forever. My God sent his angel. Shut the lion's mouths, and they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, I've done no hurt. Well, I'm, I'm innocent before my God. I'm innocent to you. I've done nothing wrong, king. And the Lord knew that. And he set me here as a sign. You know, that's the thing. And the king was exceeding glad for him. I bet he was. He probably did a little jig right there in front of the lion's den. He commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So and those fellas, they probably didn't want to go too, too far down in that den. I'm sure they put down the ladder or the rope or whatever it was. It was over the mouth of that, you know, they rolled the stone back and put down the rope and pulled Daniel up, you know, got him up out of that den. And I'm sure they're looking at those lions as they're doing that. The lions are just watching them. Not a thing. Probably laying down on the ground waiting for dinner to come. He took Daniel up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him. Did you remember what uh, happened with the three friends when they came up out of the furnace? Not even the smell of smoke. The hair wasn't singed. They didn't even have the smell of smoke on them. And notice the reason. The very last thing that said there in 23. He believed. He believed. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. There it is. That is why we don't walk. That is why we don't pray. That is why our devotion is so anemic. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, people don't say of us, you're the servant of the living God, because we really just don't believe. We like the name Christian. We like to be seen to go to church. We want to be a good citizen. But believe, please. That's a little crazy talk. The reason why we don't is because we don't believe. If we believed, lions shut their mouths. If we believe, fire has no effect. If we believe, the deliverance that these men experience can be ours. If we believe. And I want to tell you something. There's a fiery furnace and there's a den of lions waiting at the end for all of us. And it's going to come. You know, Daniel prayed three times a day, and I've often said if you pray three times a day, you're going to wind up in the den of lions eventually. But if you don't pray three times a day, you're still going to end up in the den of lions because they're going to come for you if you name the name of Christ. Are you going to be ready for that or not? And is somebody going to say of you, he believed in his God? Jesus will meet. Thanks for listening to this week's message. Please join us again next time for another installment of the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit.